So joining us on the show right now, as I mentioned, we have the vice presidential debate tonight. I do think it's very, very important. Will it move the needle? I'm not so sure. But to ask her this question and many, many others is someone who has in Florida right now. So hopefully uh, she's doing OK. Of course, my friend and the former chair of the Nevada Republican Party, Amy Tarkanian, joining us right now on the show. Amy, it's good to see you. Pleasure. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm one of the very fortunate who actually um, had her power stay on all night, even though it was flickering. Um, I'm literally five minutes, though, up the road from where uh, some friends of mine uh, had the unfortunate uh, situation of their house uh, being completely flooded. There were catfish in their pool. There was crabs in their garage. They had at least three feet, if not higher, um, amount of water uh, destroy the, the downstairs portion of their house. Their cars mm. are totaled. I was just on Anna Marie Island about an hour ago, which just reopened. Um, there's military uh, placed out there handing out water, food, tarps, blankets. Um, it's It's been pretty awful, actually, to see what a, a lot of these people have had to go through. But at the same time, really wonderful to see everyone come together. I agree. Uh, nice to see people coming together for the good of the American people. And uh, obviously, my thoughts and prayers are, are for all those people that have been affected and the loss of life is horrible. Mm -hmm. Amy, before we get to the vice presidential debate, I do want to stay on topic and ask you about this. You know, Donald Trump out there yesterday lying, saying that Joe Biden uh, wasn't reaching out to Governor Kemp. And of course, mm -hmm. Kemp confirmed that that was not the case. What do you make of the former president of the United States, again, trying to score political points and lying about communications between the current president and governors during this uh horrible crisis. I think it's absolutely terrible. And, uh, and, and quite honestly, it all it's doing is stirring the pot. It's making people angry when they don't need to be angry. Um, there's so many other problems going on in the world that he's just creating more of a mess. And, um, and it's unfortunate because there are so many people um, who rely upon what our leaders have to share. And, you know, not everyone gets to sit there and, and watch and scroll through X all day long and, and try to right. keep up on, on what's going on, what current events are happening. Nobody gets to just sit there all day long unless they're retired and watch the news. So when they hear these 30 second blurbs, they believe them and it, and it causes a lot of havoc. And so, you know, you have President Biden, who, yes, at one point, I guess he was on the beach, but whatever. And then he he was back at the White House um, and they have everything planned now for him to fly over North Carolina and assess the damage. Um, he's not going to land because it would cause more havoc. havoc. And um, and it, it's just it's not the right thing to do. And so the White House understands that. So whether if you have a Democrat or a Republican in the White House, uh, the people who who know what's best during an unfortunate situation like this know that you don't land a plane. You don't try to bring in a, a motorcade. I mean, that that's not helpful. So they just need to take a look, see what kind of um, assistance, government assistance do they need, and then go from there. That's it, plain and simple. And then just let the people know that we're here for you. Amy, so well said. Why is it so difficult for some MAGA supporters to simply understand what you just said, which is you don't want a motorcade there. Mm -hmm. You don't want a distraction. You don't want photo ops and autographs mm -hmm. and selfies. Uh, this is about the people. Why, why is it that there are so many MAGA supporters out there that fail to understand that and they want to criticize Joe Biden? Where is he? He's not there. The former yeah. president is there. Why is that? I'm not sure. And, and I think it's it's terrible because it starts from the top, right? So you've got Donald Trump who's constantly lobbying these um, unfounded uh, verbal attacks. And and so you've got people who, who want to believe it and they believe every word that he says, unfortunately, um, just because they're not happy with the opposing uh, side. And, you know, and that, and that causes a big problem. Um, you have also people, unfortunately, on social media who are believing a lot of this artificial intelligence that is being put out there. And people are reposting a picture of um, former President Trump wading through the water trying to, you know, search and rescue uh, individuals. And that's not true. Um, there's another one that's being uh, shared where he's climbing an electric pole, you know, trying to 
fix the, the cell phone problem that, that happened with Verizon. I mean, people are really dumb and they're believing this stuff. And um, it's crazy. You're right about that. I, I repeat what you just said every single day. There are a lot of dumb people out there that don't seem to understand the president's responsibilities and when he should or shouldn't be at a, at a speci in, in a specific situation. You are 150% to right, correct. All right, with that all being said, Let's talk a little bit about the vice presidential debate tonight, Tim Waltz versus J.D. Vance. Uh, Tim Waltz allegedly has been telling uh, his close orbit around him that he is very nervous. Um, yeah. I did find that interesting, not because he's nervous. I think anybody would be nervous. I don't care whether you're uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, uh, anybody, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, anybody back in the day, uh, it's natural to be nervous. Yep. I just found it interesting that that story became public, and apparently he's told a lot of people that he's nervous. What do you make of that? Well, first of all, that makes him a real person, right? I mean, that's relatable. It's, I mean, you and I have done uh, television, radio, you know, a thousand times, but I, I can still tell you, you know, if there's a topic that comes up that maybe I'm not so well versed on, yeah, mm -hmm. I get nervous. I'm yeah. sure you do too. And that's sure. just, a, it's a natural response. Um, and so I, I think it's wise that he's been uh, prepping with uh, Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, he is actually probably one of the best, if not the best right now um, in the business when it comes to improv and having um, really excellent uh, answers to a lot of questions that maybe uh, people, um, you know, aren't, aren't as well versed on. And he does a really good job at breaking things down. Um, I don't want to say like, you know, at a third grade level, but at, at a level where it doesn't go over your head. And yeah. so to be able to, to practice and rehearse with somebody who who was that talented, I think is only going to benefit him. Um, and I don't know who, maybe you know, I don't know who Senator Vance has been prepping with. Hubba, um, Attorney Hubba. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, really? She, she put out a picture on her social media. Apparently she's helping oh, J.D. No. Vance prep. Yeah, Attorney Hubba. Uh, I don't know about you, Amy, but I'd much rather have uh, Pete Buttigieg yeah. helping me in, in debate prep than somebody like attorney Haba. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, maybe she can continue to, to help him take selfies and look really, you know, sexy in her photos and his photos. I don't know. I mean, she's a pretty lady and I'm sure, I'm sure she's smart, but she doesn't seem to be even very well liked by um, her own client. I mean, uh, former president Donald Trump at one point, you know, lashed out at his, at his team of attorneys. And so, you know, I don't know if I, if I would have chosen her, but yeah. that's just me. I want to get your perspective on this, to be fair. Um, I know you're not a big Kamala Harris fan, even though at one point you were a Trump supporter, and obviously you won't be voting for Donald Trump now, just to give people some context. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris, uh, and we'll get back to the debate, but, uh, but it reminded me, of, I wanted to ask you about that. She visited the border. Now, some people will say, supporters, that's a great thing. She spoke to border security and, yeah. and, and it was great. People on the right, people that don't like her will say it was a photo op. Why did she wait this long to go down there? What yeah. do you say? I say all of that. I, I, I think, you know, still better late than never. Um, but it is very late in the game and it does, you know, smell fishy, um, which is unfortunate because it is a massive problem. And I think that, you know, she should have done this um, early on, probably maybe even from the start. And then that way would have calmed everyone down to some extent. But um, but I, I guess at this point, you know, the the race is extremely close and we're not sure, you know, if right. the vote were taken today, who would win? Sure. So, you know, I, I think at least it shows that she's uh, finally jumping on the bandwagon on that issue. And so if she does end up being the next president, then we know, okay, well, she's, she's going to tackle it. Yeah. So. But Amy, I bring that up and I bring that up, Amy, because you know that JD Vance is going to hit that home. Mm -hmm. He's going to continue to talk about calling her the border czar and he's going to, yeah. you know, going after Tim Waltz. Uh, I would imagine that's certainly something that JD Vance will bring up. If I'm Tim Waltz, I put out a video on social media earlier today about this. I talk about the fact that this is the man who said Donald Trump could be the next American Adolf Hitler. This right. is the man. Right. You got to bring that up. You got to bring yeah. up the fact that this yeah. uh, eating the dogs and the cat stuff has terrorized Awful. Springfield, Ohio. And it's, yeah. and it's because of J.D. Vance and Donald Trump. They are the culprits. I'm not even going to blame the woman who started it in Springfield because she since has apologized for it. And that yeah. wouldn't have become a national story if J.D. Vance and Donald Trump didn't 
uh, repeat those lies, right? So mm -hmm. I'm not going to blame her. It's J.D. Vance and Donald Trump and people with large platforms. He's got to bring that up as well. The childless mm -hmm. cat lady comments, attacking yep. everybody in this country for not having kids. Uh, I, I think Waltz has a lot of firepower. Listen, he's going to have to talk about his record. He's going to have to sure. talk about Kamala Harris and, and Joe Biden's record, which I think he's more than capable of doing. But I think he has to be aggressive. I don't know, Amy, which Tim Waltz we're going to see. Are we going to see an aggressive Tim Waltz that's going to go after J.D. Vance the way that Kamala Harris did in, in, in that debate uh, a few weeks ago? Or are we going to see a nice Tim Waltz? I, I, I want to see an I aggressive think he's, he's going to have to walk a fine line, Brian, because I think both men have uh, a tendency to come across as um, – mean aggressive and also very nice uh, and so there's there's two sides to both of them and if uh coach waltz um can remain level-headed and calm and not not maybe use a coach voice or use a a very stern angry or mad teacher voice since we know that's his background mm -hmm. um then i i think he'll be able to get his point across just fine Whereas I think also Senator Vance has that same streak in him. So you have both men who I think are going to have to really um, watch their tones very carefully um, or else they're going to come across yeah. as not just aggressive, but as jerks. Yeah. And, and gonna, that's what you don't sure. want. I agree. And I think J.D. Vance could come across more like that and say something yeah. stupid than maybe Tim Waltz. But, you know, I gave I gave everybody my prediction before the Harris uh, Trump debate. Uh, and by the way, before the Biden debate, I was concerned. I said yeah. that on the air. I was concerned. And I think my concerns, unfortunately, came true there or maybe fortunately, depending on your outlook of it. Uh, I said that Kamala Harris would absolutely wipe the floor clean with Donald Trump. And she absolutely did so. And we've talked about that. My prediction on this debate is I don't think it's going to move the needle anyway. I don't think either of them are going to score massive points. And it's not mm -hmm. because I don't like Tim Waltz. I just think it's going to be, you know, level keel. And if you're on the far right, you'll probably say that Vance won. If you're on the left, you'll say that uh, Waltz won. I, I I could be wrong on this and we'll have to wait and see. But just like a prediction to a game, right? I don't think there's going to be uh, a clear winner here. Uh, I think it's, you know, it's not going to move the needle. What do you think is going to happen? I don't know how much of the needle it's going to move, but I, I kind of have a feeling that there, there will be a winner. Um, you know, you've, you've got two men who are polar opposites on mm -hmm. where they stand on, on the issues. Um, you know, you've got, uh, governor Waltz, who is extremely, uh, progressive on social issues where Senator Vance is extremely conservative so much to the point where, uh, you know, most women who are centrist and in the middle, um, can't handle him, despise him. Um, and are willing to go with somebody who's extremely progressive um, because it deals with, you know, um, reproductive rights. It deals with LGBTQ issues. It deals with, um, you know, I mean, just an array of areas where people just sure. want to be left alone. And Senator Vance is more wanting to tell you what to do. And that's not going to bode well. Right. So, yeah, I, I think I think really in the end, um, both men are out there right now kind of setting the bar low, you know, by you, you mentioned that governor Waltz is saying, Oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And yeah. then you've got Senator Vance out there, like, you know, saying, Oh, I, I think I've got this, I, you know, I'm not so sure, you know, I'm going up against somebody who's seasoned. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, both of them are intentionally doing that. So that way we don't come in thinking that one's going to have it in the bag over the other in case one falters um, to some extent. Yeah. Um, but I, I do have a feeling, I, I think that, um, you know, there's probably going to be a winner, but I, I agree with you. I, I still think in the end, you're going to have those who are uh, devoted to either candidate or are, are going to stick with their candidate. It's not going to really yeah. move the needle much, except for maybe some of those who are in the middle still. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I just think on some of the issues, not all of them, the overwhelming majority of the Americans will take Tim Waltz's side. Gun yeah. control, abortion. I mean, these are issues where the Democrats have a huge edge, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, Donald Trump on a debate stage refused to say whether if there was an abortion ban put on his desk, if he's president, whether he would veto that bill. He wouldn't answer that question. Mm -hmm. When he was asked about Ukraine, who do you want? This was even mesmerizing to me. He was asked, who do you want to win the war? 
Ukraine or Russia? And he wouldn't answer the question. Yeah. I, I just feel like there's so much within the uh, uh, ticket of the Trump Vance ticket where Tim Waltz has so much to, to go after Vance. And I hope he does. I, again, I just don't know which Tim Waltz we're going to see. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to, I guess we'll just have to uh, wait and find out from your perspective. Yeah. Is there anything that Tim Waltz can say? Is there anything that Tim Waltz can do? And you know, I ask you this question every single time you come on this show. I know you're not voting for Donald Trump. I don't know where your head is at right now when it comes to Kamala Harris, but is there anything that can happen tonight that maybe could sway your vote and say, well, I'm going to vote for Harris. I'm not voting for Trump, but I'm going to vote for this mm -hmm. ticket. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he could actually say. I, I just hope that he presents himself in, in a very statesmanlike manner. Um, with still, you know, mixed with a healthy dose of aggression. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do not care for Senator Vance and his stances. I, I think the fact that um, he has flip-flopped, not just in a way where one can sit there and, and evolve over time, you know, and uh, maybe re-educate yeah. themselves on certain issues. Um, yeah. But the fact that, and you mentioned this at the very beginning, to call former President Trump America's Hitler, literally within just a few years time. And then now all of a sudden he's like the best yeah. president since sliced bread. Um, he's an opportunist and sure. he's done that now in a number of areas. And I'm not comfortable with that. I would much rather have somebody um, who may be uh, more progressive than what I'd like in certain areas, but I know yep. where he stands and I know what I'm getting. Yeah, sure. No, um, that makes sense. Opportunist. I, I would say many that still support Donald Trump today that are in an office, they're exactly what you just mentioned. They are opportunists. I, I want to ask you one more question from to get the female's perspective on this, because I was talking a little bit about this yesterday on the air. So as you know, Amy, J.D. Vance's wife is Indian, right? She's an mm -hmm. accomplished woman, uh, attractive, smart, you know, a lot of great qualities. She has very educated. Mm -hmm. And Laura Loomer was invited. Oh, to Donald, with Donald Trump uh, inviting her to the 9-11 ceremonies, this is a woman who recently said on social media, quoting that if Kamala Harris gets back into the White House, it'll, it'll smell, smell like, like curry. curry. And when J.D. Vance was asked about this on national television, he got very defensive. Yeah. And then he said, quote, doesn't matter whether you're eating curry or fried chicken in the White House. Yeah. That was his response. And I'm wondering from a female's <laughs> perspective, how could a woman, in this case, Mrs. Vance, stand by her husband, especially coming from the fact that she is an Indian woman? How yeah. can just your perspective on that? I, I don't know. And it, it, it just seems that, you know, there, there's no there's no bottom for Trump and Vance. Uh, they just keep digging their own grave. Um, and I think, you know, Vance even took it further and said something like, oh, I make a mean curry. You know, I mean, it's just it's stupid. He, it wasn't well thought out at all. Um, it, it came across as, you know, doubling down on racism. Um, and uh, it, it was uh, lacking empathy. And and I think that's what the two of those men. Um, that's why they feed off of each other. They're exactly two peas in a pod. They're opportunists who lack empathy and they're narcissists. And, you know, I, I don't know how, I don't know how his wife continues to stomach somebody um, who makes such off-colored statements time and time and over and over yeah. again. I mean, I'm not one really to give a lot of advice on relationships, but maybe she should take a page from the Melania Trump playbook and live in another yeah. state and don't be in the same bedroom, uh, you know, for decades. And, you know, Melania seems to be doing okay, I guess, uh, separating herself from Donald. But uh, <laughs> anyway, Amy, always appreciate your perspective. Uh, interested to get your take on, on, on this debate after it happens tonight. Always sure. a pleasure having you on. Uh, glad you're safe out there, uh, in Thanks. Florida, please stay safe. And, uh, always great to talk to you, Amy. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for having me. Talk to you later. <laughs> talk to you later, Amy. Uh, love having her on good friend, wonderful person. Uh, love her commentary, political commentary. Of course, I'm talking about Amy Tarkanian. She is the former Nevada Republican chair. She's not ready to vote for Kamala Harris, at least not yet, but she is 100% not voting for Donald Trump, and I consider that a win.